A Testament Against the World, The Lord's Rebuke, Generation's End, September 14th, 2011, from the Lord, our God and Savior, the word of the Lord spoken to Timothy, for all those who have ears to hear. Thus says the Lord, Streams of water flow down from the mountains, springs of water burst forth from the rocks, rivers of water overflow their banks, and still the thirst of this people is not quenched. Multitudes of dead and dying peoples fill the streets and the alleyways. No hope is found. No light breaks through the open spaces. The darkness grows and is very thick. Many darkened and ill faces wandering about, treading the broad way. The light of life dims as their hearts grow cold. Their countenances are always downcast, for there is no hope in man. Affection is all but lost. Compassion is forgotten, and loving one another has no place in man's designs. For natural affection departs from the hearts of the wicked, and lustful endeavors consume them. Filthiness has made a home, and perversion is praised and celebrated openly in the streets as the innocent look upon them with wonder. You deranged and most wicked generation! I have looked upon you. I know all your doings, says the Lord God, even I who formed you. How long will you tempt me? How long shall you rebuild Sodom and make Gomorrah your home? My people have forgotten me days without end. My heart tears inside me each and every time I look upon you. Israel does not know me, and those called by the Christ's name pollute my name and my word without ceasing. They are unrelenting. I can no more listen to their foul speech. I can no more bear the sight of them. The God of Israel is dead in their eyes. The salvation of God has no part with them. Unless I change and become like them, unless I bow down and give heed to their demands, that I altogether conform to their image. And what more shall I say then? What more shall I do for a people such as this? They will not listen. They refuse to give heed. They squeeze their eyes shut with all their strength while clasping their hands over their ears tightly. What is left then? Only that I gather what little light remains and every innocent child. I must make room. I must clear my way before me. I must break this people and destroy all they have made. It must be done. The wrath of God must be poured out. The cleansing fire must rage until every last vestige of man's invention is gone from the earth, until every last stronghold of evil is broken down and utterly destroyed, until every last hint of sin is cleansed from this place. For I am holy, the only God whose name is One. Though it greatly pains my heart, a wound which shall last forever. Yet if I do not do this, my people shall never have a name. They shall never dwell in my holy place. They shall never see the light or know life as it was in the beginning. Until the sanctuary is cleansed, I cannot dwell with my people, both with them and in them. Unless I make a full end, there can be no restoration. If I do not complete my task, never again shall I walk with my beloved in the garden. Never again shall the little children come to me and gather around. Open your eyes! 
cast yourselves down. Let your hearts melt before the holy fire. Embrace my purifying flame. My dying children, you are the last generation, the last of these kingdoms of men. I love you, yet you choose death. You have forsaken me and forced my hand. The stink of your perversions fills my nostrils. Your murders stain my courts. The broken bodies of the innocent and the blameless are piled up in heaps before my eyes. And still you say within yourselves, We have done no wrong. We have provoked no God to anger. There is no judgment to come. We do not retain God in our thoughts. His law is far from us. We do not know him, nor do we need him. O oh, most wicked and loathsome generation! I have seen it! I have seen and know. The living God has come down. The salvation of God is here. He has seen and knows. He has searched. He has went through the multitudes and looked. He has looked deep within. He has called and pleaded. Behold, he has poured himself out. And still his life departs from this people. His light is all but gone from their eyes as they fade into a slumber from which there is no escape, a sleep from which the wicked of heart shall never awake. Death. What a horrible and sad thing this is! What a mournful cry is heard from the mouth of the Holy One of Israel! My people! Beloved children! Why have you forsaken me? Thus, I must finish my book and close this chapter. For the desolate shall have no name, and this most wicked generation is cut off from their legacy. Their wickedness shall not rise up a second time. They shall never again pass this way or be seen of again. A whole generation of dead and dying people, a great multitude of peoples, who refused to drink. A great and mighty people slain by their own hand. A whole generation of children, of whom I have loved with my whole heart, even unto death. A whole generation wiped from the face of the earth. Even so. Amen.